Hello, everybody. My name is Kim. I am a community learning specialist with Juice Space, and welcome to our Junior Makers Cardboard Automata webinar. Since we can't be doing our uh, normal programming um, like we usually do whenever Juice Space is open, we are trying to bring our programming live to you. So we are going to be making a cardboard automata, which if you don't know what that is, that's okay. Uh, we're going to be talking about it and I'm going to be showing you, kind of giving you the steps on how to make it and um, showing you how to do that um, with just materials that you have lying around your house. And I'm going to be giving you a list. If you don't have everything, that's great. You can always improvise. Uh, not a big deal. So let's get started. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to uh, do that in the question and answer. Um, and uh, I will try and uh, do that, as uh, answer them as they come in. So let me know. But if you are good, let's get started. So we are doing a cardboard automata. I guess I should talk about what Junior Makers is. Junior Makers is a um, program that we have every Wednesday uh, from six to six. Um, it is for kiddos, basically from ages six to 12 years old. Every month is theme. So our month for March is cardboard automata. And we basically do the same activity every week. Um, so it doesn't build on itself. It's just the same activity, to, but we do different activities every month. So this month is Cardboard Automata. So just to kind of give you a heads up. So whenever we are back and up and running that you know how that goes. So yeah, let's get started. Um, oh, maybe. There we go. So what is a cardboard automata? So basically an automata is like, it's a type of mechanical sculpture um, and that is, uh, movable. So we are going to be making really simple ones, but out there, I'm sure you've seen them before on a much more complex level. So we um, basically, we're going to be using just simple materials and they're going to help kind of make a story. So it's, um, if you're into art or into making or crafting, this is going to be great for you. Um, so we're going to be uh, kind of learning about just simple mechanical elements, um, cams, levers, uh, things like that. Um, and the nice thing about it is that I'm gonna show you how to just get things created, like the basics of how to create it. And the nice thing about it is that you can customize it, customize it and make it your own in any way you like, um, in terms of like what story or sculptural aspects um, you want to add to it. So that can be all you. And that's kind of the really fun thing about this. Another awesome thing about it is that we're just gonna be using basic ma uh, materials that we have um, that you would have around the house, cardboard, uh, you know, sticks, crafting sticks, pencils, foam, uh, paper, glue sticks, things like that. But the the nice thing about these is that you can also really up them and make them more complex um, by using like wood or metal or wire or things like that. Uh, so that's another really cool thing about these. Um, so I have just like a kind of a small video of a one that I found on YouTube. So this is kind of a, an example of how, what we're gonna be kind of making today. So you can see, I'll play that again. You can see that on the top, we have this lever that's moving this wheel, that's moving this wheel, that is then turning the whale spout right here on top. So it's pretty cool. Um, so we are going to be basically making this part and then you um, as a participant, you know, later on after we're done can kind of customize what goes on on top, which is a lot of fun. So what do you need for a cardboard automata? Let's find out. So some things that you need. So the first thing you need is a cardboard box. So the one um, <clears throat> that is suggested um, is a six by six. Um, I've used a uh, basically a three by six, so it's a little bit thinner um, in width, but it's a six month six inches high. Um, but really, you can use any box that a that uh, you have around the house, as long as that you have a basically a stick or you know something like that skewering stick something that is long enough to go through the um basically the 
shortest part of it or I don't know you'll have to kind of if you like might have to experiment with what you have at home um so but really kind of a smaller cardboard box that you might have um you know hey people are getting things sent to them if they're not going out with this you know social distancing you might be getting a lot more boxes here in the next couple of days so this will be a great opportunity to kind of figure out maybe one of the boxes you can upcycle to do for this um so you might also need some thick foam sheets so i have some uh thick foam sheets however you don't have to have thick foam sheets for the uh for uh the cam if you have cardboard you know you can um we're going to be cutting off parts of the kind of the uh the these flaps of the cardboard uh, box. So you could use those as well. And I'll talk about that here in just a second, um, what you could use them for, for the cam and cam followers. So we'll talk about what those are, but this suggests um, foam, but you can absolutely use cardboard or any kind of thick material that you can easily cut. Um, skewer sticks. So like if you are good, like your family likes to make kebabs, the kebab sticks, a great option. Um, we at Do Space we used um, sticks. chopsticks are really great. They um, we use the ones that you don't necessarily have to pull apart. If those are all you have, if there is a way to kind of cut through like the thicker part that you pull apart, you can do that as well. Um, a pencil, um, any kind of a long stick. I mean, hey, you probably can even go outside and get a stick off your tree you know, be creative, go on a scavenger hunt, and maybe come find some things outside that you can use for this as well. That'd be a lot of fun um, activity before doing this, but just kind of a longer stick that you can use um, that's going to help go make, be our levers basically. So that's an option. Um, chopsticks, sticks, pencils, uh, tree sticks, things like that. Um, you might need some tape. Uh, we might you might need to tape some things together um, whenever you're kind of putting the the top part on it your the sculptural part of it um scissors you can definitely need scissors to cut things out a uh, hot glue gun and the glue stick to go with it this is going to be really good because we're going to be gluing um the either the cardboard uh the cam and cam followers to our sticks gluing things together and the hot glue gun is the fastest and easiest way to do that um we you might need some washers or nuts for weight we'll kind of talk about that we didn't i wasn't doing that for uh, my class um for the past two wednesdays but you can absolutely use those um those could be you can that could be definitely something you can use to kind of help with the cam follower which again i'll kind of follow up on to talk about that later um a sharpened pencil uh so again i will I, we didn't use a pencil in our class, but there are different ways that you can use a pencil for. And then a nail or wood screw to poke holes in the cardboard. You know, if you don't have those, the end of your scissors work just fine as well. Um, if you're, you know, if your family's into word working, maybe a, an awl could work as well. Things like that. Anything just to poke a hole through the cardboard is what something that you'll need. Um, yeah, so these are the kind of things that you have around the house again pretty easy but a lot of these things you can you know either if you don't have everything you could probably uh do without um or kind of adjust things so probably the one thing that would be the hardest to adjust is the glue gun but you could definitely tape things as well if you didn't have glue or glue gun so but again we'll talk about that when can we get to the assembly so getting started so you are going to need um uh, your box first so what to do is you'll kind of want to just the steps that you know close and open your box you just want to close it right off and you'll want those because uh you use them you can use them for different things you can use them as a decoration uh use them for the cams you're definitely going to need them uh the squares like the ends i guess the corners um to uh, help us stabilize the box. So you're going to save those pieces because they're going to be useful. Um, and then this direction, say if you have like a six by six, it says to cut it in half. You can do that, but you don't have to. Um, if you want to make it a little thinner, you can. Um, but again, don't have to, just a suggestion. Um, but yeah, like I said, to stabilize the box, if you just cut off the corners of those flaps, and then you're just going to glue them right into the corners, uh, opposite corners, just to help stabilize that box, because um, if you, your box is uh, wobbly, 
your cam and cam follower and the spinning motion of everything might not work as well. So you're just going to want to glue those together. But those are nice that your box is nice and stable um, so that um, you can do that. And again, tape can be a separate glue. Um, not as but it's obviously a good um, kind of work if you don't have that, uh, if you don't have that going on. Um, let's see, what is next? So the next thing you're going to kind of think about is choosing your motion. So like, for example, of our, um, the, the video that you, we just saw of the whale, so that had the spinning motion. And there's a couple of different motions that you can do. You can do just going around, you can do up and down and then run around, and then back and forth. So those are three kind of pretty simple ones that I'm going to talk about. I have um, that you can do. And so those are going to probably be the, the first two, the round and up and down, um, are going to be the two easiest. The back and forth will, uh, you'll need two cams. So what are the, I keep talking about these cams and cam followers. What are these? So basically, whenever you're, we're kind of putting this together, this middle circle right here is your cam. Um, and so that's going to basically dictate the motion in which your sculpture does. So for example, if it's a circle, it's just going to go around and around. If it's like an oval, it'll go because it has, you know, it's um, elongated, it's going to go up and down and around. Um, if you have two cams, like maybe if there was like one, uh, two of these, one on each side of the cam follower, it would go back and forth. Um, and so then the cam follower, basically go uh, transmits the motion of the element of the, the box to animate it. So that's what your the, the, the cam spins and then your cam follower basically does the motion that the cam does, if that makes sense. Um, I'm gonna see if we have any questions. No questions yet, no worries. Um, and yeah, so those are, Sorry, I'm looking at my attendees to see if we have anybody. We have a few people, so which is exciting. Um, yeah, so those are going to be just kind of the, some of the things that you um, can do. Round and round, up and down, round and back and forth. But again, the nice thing about these is once you kind of get those basic motions, you can get creative and try out some different things um, to, uh, to make it even more dynamic, which is a lot of fun. There we go. So here are some examples. So um, some pictures of our different motions. So we have our round and round. So you can see this is our round and round. Our cam is going to be a circle. So it's just going to be a nice big circle. And that, and because it's a circle, it's just going to go you know, round and round, which is going to spin this, the cam follower around, which is going to spin our uh, triangle right up here. So you can kind of see that uh, here's a circle, our circle, and then it's going to make that you know, circling motion. Our next option is going to be up and down and round and round. So because so our cam is, like I said, kind of more um, is an oval or more oblong. Um, so depending on where the hole, where your um, stick goes through the cam, um, it'll, you know, make it uh, like a really tight you know, dynamic up and down or just a subtle up and down, um, but it'll still go round. And then you have kind of the back and forth. And so you can see how there's two cams on here on the back and forth one uh, to uh, make that go back and forth. And so this one um, probably is going to be the trust of them. So I would say the options for round and round, round and up and down and back and forth. So basically, um, uh, it's all going to be dictated on how your cam works. So our, your round, going around, is going to be a round cam. Uh, going up and down and round is going to be kind of an oblong or an oval cam. And then you can see on the back and forth, it's going to be, um, it's going to be two cams that are going to kind of uh, touch and move the uh, cam follower. Um, so making the mechanism. So we are going to then, you're going to need to draw your cam and cam follower and cut them out. So this suggests doing it on a thick foam sheet. But again, if you don't have a foam sheet, that's fine. You can always use card. Um, 
and you're just kind of wanting to make it a little bit thicker because if it's too like if your cardboard's too thin um then it's not going to have enough friction to turn everything so you just want to make sure that your cam is thick because if that's not thick enough then it's not going to be able to move your cam follower so make it sure it's like a good thickness um this suggests using like a cup or something circular to trace around um but then you can also you know experiment with some cam so over on the left you can see that you know this is our classic circle we have an oval one that's egg shaped and one with like a little notch um in kind of our classes before we had somebody use a square um it's just kind of you know experiment and you might have to make a couple even uh, because you might find that you know how you cut out your cam and where you put the hole through the stick you know might not move the cam follower how you like so you might have to make a couple and that's okay it's all about experimentation it's all about figuring out what works best for you to make the you know kind of the motion that you want um and so you also want to make sure that the uh cam follower um is a little bit bigger than that cam because then that makes sure that your cam won't go off the edge of the cam follower because you want to make sure there's a nice good you know a lot a, as much connection um, between the cam and the cam follower because if it's the cam follower is a little bit smaller it might um, it might kind of go off the side of the cam and you don't want that so it'll affect your automata's motion so make sure it's a little bit bigger than your cam okay so now we're going to kind of do assembling so you're Make sure that you get two on each side of your box. Um, and so, like I, you know, kind of this is where you know that nail might come into. Um, but you can also use scissors, um, an awl, something that's just pokey enough to get through, um, to get through the sides of your box. Um, so, and then also through either the middle of your cam, whether it's foam or cardboard. Um, so you'll want to make sure. So again, where you put your stick um your skewer stick or you know whatever you're using as your uh lever uh where your hole is in your cam is also going to affect the motion so it maybe if you even if you have a circle but you put it a little bit further you know not in the middle but further on one side than the other it might change the motion so um you might think about that and kind of experiment with how that works as well um, and another suggestion is to cut out a little piece of foam or cardboard box to, uh, for and push it on each side of the skewer sticks on the outside um, to kind of hold this. So your this is going to be acting your stick is going to be acting like as your axle, right? So you go just like an axle that's you know on your car or bike. Um, it's going to be moving that circle um your cam and so th having these little bits on the end just keeps them in place um so that your your stick or you know your axle doesn't move out um move its place out of the box but we're going to glue these but you don't want to glue them quite yet so don't glue those quite with your hot glue um so then next you're going to want to poke a to uh, poke a hole at the top of your frame um and i'm now realizing that i think we talked about it, there was a straw i might have skipped that one you're going to need a straw too now that i'm thinking about our list of materials um you're going to need a straw this list suggested a paper straw but you do not need to use a paper straw you can always use um, a plastic one paper is obviously a little bit more sustainable a little bit more eco-friendly but if you all you have is a plastic one no worries um that is just going to you're going to want to put that um that your straw through the, hole at the top because that's going to allow the stick that is going to uh be attach your uh, artwork on um just allows it to move freely and not get stuck on the edges of your cardboard it just allows you know a little less friction and allows it to move more smoothly um and so you want to make sure that there is a space on the top or the bottom but keep in mind or i guess above and below but keep in mind how much of this of the uh straw is below because if your straw is too long and you have kind of like an oblong cam your cam might actually even hit the straw which to affect your motion so just make sure that you don't even need much like 
a quarter inch to a half inch above or below. It just doesn't, it doesn't need much. You just want a little bit sticking out. Um, and then to kind of make sure it stays in place, you'll just want to glue that in place, just kind of just glue right around uh, the cardboard and the straw right here on the top. Um, so our tip is, you know, the pencil is a good way to kind of enlarge the holes for the drinking sauce uh, so it can fit through. Um, so that's always, you can do that or an awl or just anything that you're poking your hole with. Scissors, again, work just fine. Um, so now you're going to want to uh, put your, you know, sh your straw, uh, your second, uh, not straw, <laughs> your second stick through that straw and then glue your cam follower to the bottom. So you don't want there to be like, it, you don't want it to go all the way through or if there is just have a little bit going through. Um, but you don't want to stick it all the way and have a lot going on the bottom side of your cam because that might affect how the cam or the cam follower because that might affect how the cam um, touches your cam follower. So this is your cam follower. So this is the piece that you want to be a little bit bigger than your cam, the stick, and um, you're just going to glue it right on top. So how, you know, I think the easiest way to do that is just to take your stick and your glue gun and just kind of, because most likely your cam follower is going to stay on your stick pretty good. Um, without, uh, if, and then you could just like spin your stick while you're gluing at the same time. Um, so this is where the part where if you want um, a little bit of weight to help with that friction between the cam and cam follower, this is where you would put kind of that the washer or nut to add weight before you glue the um, the cam follower onto the stick. So uh, that'll help just like push it down onto the cam follower, the cam, the cam. It'll help push the cam follower onto the cam to make that motion a little bit more um, um, just there. So you know, gra letting gravity do it. Um, so then this is where you can test your mechanism. So once you kind of, um, once you have glued your cam follower onto your stick, this is where you can kind of adjust where your cam is on the, on your axle. So um, I'm going to go back a few pictures. Um, doo -doo -doo. Right here. Okay. So I'm going to go back a few pictures because um, one thing to notice is when where you're putting your cam is you don't want to, um, or you could, but it's a little bit easier to put the, to kind of offset the cam from where it touches the cam followers. So see how our cam isn't directly underneath, right in the middle of our cam follower. It's a little bit to the side. So you don't want to put it under, right underneath. I found that it works a little bit better when it's a little bit to the side. You don't want to get it too far to the side because then it might, you know, your cam might slip off the edge of the cam follower. Um, but uh, this is where you're going to kind of test it out because eventually you're going to glue uh, your cam onto this, your lever or your stick right here, um, your axle, I guess. Um, and so you're just going to want to make sure that you're testing it before you glue it because obviously if you just glue it right away and not test it first, you might not get the motion that you want. It might turn, might not turn as well. Um, and so th things like that. So test it out. And then once you get your cam where you feel like, oh, it has make a connection to the cam follower, it's getting a good round and round, round and up and down or good back and forth, um, then you can just glue it just like you did on the, like the cam follower, the stick to the cam follower. You're just going to glue on each side um, the cam to your stick. So I'm going to go back. Um, so you're going to want to glue those in place and also you'll want to glue the side of the, the little, on the ends, your little uh, pieces of cardboard. Um, uh, you'll want to glue those down just to make sure that your, ac your stick, axle stick stays in place. So now you're going to make your handle. So this is where those little bits of cardboard that you kept from the flaps of the box are going to come in handy. So you're just going to cut a little square. It doesn't have to be too big. And then you're just going to uh, glue to the very end um, 
your stick and then um, glue a little piece. And this, um, you could just, put, you know, a toothpick, thing, something like that um, onto the end. And so I'm going to go back again. Or maybe let's see. We'll go to the, so you can kind of see here how they did this. So you're going to glue that little piece of cardboard just at the end of your stick and then glue like a toothpick or another little stick um, on the other end of that piece of cardboard to make a nice handle. And basically done. And now it's up to you to make your story. So this is where the fun part really begins because now you can um, you can really customize and kind of get creative here and think about like, what is your motion? Is it up and down? Is it around? Is it both and forth? What is kind of your story you want to do with that? Um, so you, you know, uh, things that you have to maybe think about things that spin, things that bounce, things that jump. Um, what can you use or kind of make uh, on top to, to make those things, you know, become dynamic like that. So maybe it's like a bunny, a bunny bounces. And so maybe you have that going like up and down. Um, what goes back and forth? You know, th th those are kind of some fun things to think about. Um, so this is where, you know, you can kind of get uh, really creative with what you're putting on top. You can, if you have, you know, this is where you get your crafts out and you can use just whatever you have laying around the house. So you could use cardboard, your, you know, craft paper. Um, maybe you have some um, recycled plastic, you know, maybe, maybe it's not recycling day for you yet. Um, and you have some things that you can uh, kind of cut and use to, to make, um, to glue onto your stick to make it a little bit more fun. Um, get your coloring uh, things out, markers, pencils, uh, crayons, fun things like that. How can you make this really fun and dynamic um, for you? Um, so really quickly, I'm going to show, I'm going to get out of this, and I'm just going to show you a video, a really short video of um, one of our junior maker uh, attendees from a couple weeks ago and just show you her, uh, what she made. So, yep, she was creative. She thought about what twirls. She knew ballerinas twirl. I think she does that. So that really made um, that for you. I'm going to do go back to this and go to share. And so, yeah. So I guess my next thing is if anybody has any questions. Um, and if you do, um, let us on um you can do them here or i might um uh we are always taking questions on facebook you can always message uh do space um on our facebook page or on instagram um uh i'm or if you come back to this you can um uh do have questions on our Facebook page. Um, I'll try and answer them as best as I can. Um, another, uh, I'm going to change what I'm sharing as well. Um, well, new, actually, I'm going to exit out of this. I'm going to exit out of this thing and I'm going to go to this website because this is where my inspiration is exploratorium.edu. Um, and they're a really great website. They're out of um, San Francisco and they just do, a, they have a whole bunch of projects, a lot of things. So this is kind of where I got my um, inspiration to, uh, to make this project for junior makers. And so you can kind of see here some different kids examples of them. Um, there's also the step-by-step -step activity guide in a couple of languages um, that you can, if, um, you know, English is not your native, but you can try out some, you can also follow along with some other languages as well. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed our, our webinar. Um, I, we are going to be doing another one at 5 p.m. today on March um, 18th at 5 p.m. Um, and again, we have junior makers. Um, once we're, you know, back in the building, we have junior makers every Wednesday from 5 to 6 um, that you can register at our website at dospace.org. Um, but we'll let you know when that's back up. But just for the nap time being, we're going to be doing um, some more webinars. We're going to have another Junior Maker webinar for Cardboard Automata on Friday. 
Um, I know at 1 p.m. as well. So we have one tonight at 5 p.m. and one on Friday the 20th at 1 p.m. So thank you guys so much for coming. Anyway, um, join us again. Uh, keep up on our Do Space Facebook page for all of our webinars, um, our tech help activities. We have one coming up at 2, which is um, intro to uh, I forget. We have another one at two o'clock. Look at our calendar. Look go at our Facebook page. I shouldn't know that. I'm so sorry. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and we hope to see you guys again soon. We will talk to you later. Have a good day, everybody. And um, keep making uh, some fun stuff out there. Okay.